Good morning, welcome to another uh, Wednesday devotional. I'm Rick, this is Justin, we're glad to have you with us. And I hope that you're having a great week and I uh, hope that uh, everything's going well with you. Uh, we're gonna be back in the book of Titus today, Titus chapter one, we're still there. Uh, look at uh, uh, five or six verses there from the end of the chapter uh, as we make our way through this book and the letter that Paul has written uh, to Titus there. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this day, the beautiful day that we have to enjoy. We thank you, Father, that uh, uh, you have watched over us and protected us and pray that you'll continue to do that. We pray for healing for those who are dealing with illness and other things of anxiety of their lives. We pray, God, that you'll be with them, protect us from this virus. We're thankful, Father, that things are improving, that things seem to be returning to normal. We're grateful, Father, that so many have been able to come back to worship and be a part of that. And uh, we pray that uh, for others, that they'll continue to uh, uh, be engaged. And Father, that they'll be able to soon be back with us as well. Thank you for your church and thank you for Spanish Fort. And Father, we have so many things that are taking place and getting started that uh, we just want to ask you to bless each of those and we pray that you'll be glorified in all that we do here. Bless our elders and give them the wisdom uh, as they are making decisions. And uh, Father, help us to follow that uh, their lead. Uh, again, thank you for Jesus who makes all things possible. In his name we ask it, and amen. Off subject question, you don't know what's coming. Yeah, I know, it's gonna be real off. I forgot to, I forgot to tell you, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it and go first to give okay. you a little time to think about it or whatever it is. Uh, what, what's the one thing that you look forward to that, that, not necessarily something way down mm -hmm. the time. Maybe it's something every week that you look forward to, or it could be something that's out way out there in the future or whatever. You know, I thought about this one and everything because uh, um, when Barb was working, and um, of course she she would have to go to school on Friday, and and I'm off on Fridays. Uh, she used to say uh, jokingly that Thursday night was my Friday night and everything. I could stay up a little later, watch a little TV and everything. So everything. So for a long time, and, and still do, for the most part, even though she's not working, we still make it my Friday night. Uh, I always look forward to Thursdays. You know, that, that's kind of the winding down of the week and, and everything, knowing you're going to have Friday off and just to kind of enjoy things or whatever. So I guess in, in, in the short term, it's kind of kind of Thursdays, you know, of course, you know, uh, in, in the big, bigger picture of what everything, you know, probably uh, I guess retirement would be the thing you look forward to, or something like that. But anyway, so what's yours? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say Fridays is the kind of the short term thing that everyone looking for that day off to get right. to be home and catch up on things and spend time with your family and stuff. Um, I guess I don't know. I don't. That's kind of a tough one for me, especially off the top of my head. I would, I probably should have thought about it a little bit, but yeah. um, I don't really. I kind of just move from one thing to the next, and so like the next big thing coming up is what I'm focused on and what I'm ready to, to move into, and then when that thing's over, I move on to the next kind of big event or thing that we're having. I kind of, I'm a kind of a weird person. I don't really get real hyped up about stuff like that. I got you. So I got you. Have a unique person. I, I, I was I I'm weird. If I'd have given you time, I was anticipating you. Yeah, I would have said something about my family or being with Anna. No, I would have thought you would have said something like heaven. <laughs> heaven. Yeah. You always give the the, the scriptural oh, yeah. correct answer to the question. Church every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. those spiritual things, you know, everything. Yeah. All right. Titus chapter one. Let's start in verse ten. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. They must be silenced since they are upsetting whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be in the faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for many good works. Uh, 
although Paul doesn't really come out with a specific name for these people that he's talking about, although he does kind of allude to a couple things here. I think in this particular section of text that, that Paul seems to be dealing with some uh, legalists and um, really, what are we talking about when we talk about legalism, maybe both then and now, maybe it's the same or whatever? Um, I hope we're on the same page here. I didn't, uh, when, when I was thinking about legalism, uh, what came to my mind was is when we hold traditions or opinions as scripture, as the word of God, and when we try to force that on people. And a lot of times it's for, you know, like he says, for our own selfish reasons, our own personal gains is why we do that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I think of legalism, I think of when you hold traditions or opinion as high as God's word. True, true. Yeah, I think we are. We're, we're, you know, it's the idea of, of, of self-righteousness, mm -hmm. the idea of, uh, uh, in some context, of the idea of set, uh, keeping a set of rules and maybe I can keep them better than you or, mm -hmm. or enforce you to keep these set of rules. And, and, and sometimes we even make those traditions part of the rules <laughs> yeah. that, that we're trying to make everyone keep. Well, what's the danger in all of that? I like what he said in verse 11. It kind of kind of tied in with a lot of, all of even my friends I know. It says, they had to be careful because he's upsetting whole families. I found that interesting. It's that a lot of times when we, when we are holding things that aren't truth as truth or when we're trying to be better than everyone else and seeing how that I'm a better Christian than you are trying to do these things. A lot of times what we do is push people away. Um, we're not loving, we're not inviting. And ultimately, you know, when we do mess up because we hold people to such high standards, they view us as hypocrites. They don't view us as, you know, like they should, like sinners, like everyone else who make mistakes, who need God's grace and God's mercy and his love. Because we don't talk about that. We just talk about the rules and make sure you keep these rules in this order and do this at the right time. And it becomes very much the fact that we are viewed as hypocrites or are we, we push people away because no one can live up to that standard and i've seen that happen to people sure. friends of mine to, to people all over the place that sure. churches that kind of dwell on that yeah it, it, it definitely affects unity and that unity could be within the whole body of christ but uh, as he talked about here you brought out the whole families and i think we we've all seen that happen where even within People's families, they're those that might not agree with somebody in the family or trying to hold them to a standard or being dogmatic toward them, and it causes division, even within that family and everything. And it certainly has a, an effect upon uh, people that are witnessing this. I, I, I do think it's a turnoff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, it's a turnoff to people because what we're reflecting is we're reflecting uh, this. The, these rules and keeping these rules become more important than the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly not showing the love of Christ when we, when, when we sometimes treat people the way we do um, and, and demonstrate this. Uh, you know, in the Bible, those that were probably labeled as, as legalists and those that were, uh, you know, uh, held to uh, this type of belief and, and, and practice um, Jesus had a lot of things to say to them. That's the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. uh, why was that the case? Why do you think Jesus was so hard on these Pharisees? Well, I think a lot of it was with the fact that they sh they were the ones that were supposed to know the law, mm -hmm. um, but then they used that law to for personal gain to manipulate others. We we're studying the book of John with the kids Sunday morning, and we just got to the part where Jesus heals Lazarus. So after he heals Lazarus, they're like talking about this and they get together and they're like, what are we going to do about this? People are going to believe him. It's not the fact that, you know, here's this man who just raised someone from the dead. They're worried about their own profit, their own position and authority and that people would believe this guy because he's doing all these amazing things. It wasn't like, well, I need to get to know him because look what he can do. He can even raise the dead. It was, how can we stop them from believing because he's going to mess up our, our gig that we have. Yeah. So just that self-righteousness and and that greed had set in to them and they wanted to, regardless of, you know, Jesus being right there in their face, they, they couldn't see it because they were so caught up in their own power and control. Yeah. And I think Jesus 
knew the dangers of this one. I'll talk about that in just a minute uh, and everything. But you're right. I think these these individuals, uh, of all people, um, should not have practiced it that way. They should have known better. They should. Have, they were the most quote religious people there were, and yet their lifestyle, their attitude, their actions didn't reflect any of that and everything. And I think Jesus was was really hard on that. He and he and he called them some pretty pretty rough stuff over there, you know. Um, so uh, it kind of leads to this because. How, how is it that we can have healthy discussions with people that maybe are, don't agree with us? Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a difficult passage, um, and even within the body of Christ, there, you know, everybody doesn't always agree, hard to believe, right? Mm -hmm. but, but they don't. So, so how, do we, how do we have those positive, good conversations with those, those people here and, and maintain unity? I think it starts with our motivation or attitude. Um, if we enter into a, a discussion like that with uh, with the desire to, to be right or seem smarter or to prove your point, rather than entering to it with that love and openness to study the scripture, to want to really dig into God's word and understand God's word and understand the truth, um, it's kind of, I think it's about how we approach it. Um, because, you know, most of the time, people believe what they're doing is right. They don't. A lot of times, they don't just you know do things because that's they just do it that way. A lot of times, people even in other denominations or even in our own body have just have a misunderstanding or they they've seen something and, and maybe you've seen something and now you think different than someone else. And so when you can have a healthy discussion and really dig into the truth and put away tradition and concepts outside of the scripture, it can be a healthy and, and good thing for the for your faith, for the body of Christ, but yet we, a lot of times it's all about, can I be right? Am I I'm smarter than you? Or, you know, what I'm doing is right, what you're doing is wrong. It's, it's not really digging into scripture and studying it and, and learning together. Yeah, and I, and I think you're spot on. I think it's, it's we have to stay focused on what, what is the goal here? Mm -hmm. and, and the goal is not to win an argument. The goal is to discover truth. And I think if, 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 if both parties can reach that understanding up front that what we're after here is is my goal is not to convince you that I'm right, but my goal is for us to find out what is right and truth. And we can use the scripture as that authority yeah. and not our opinion or not how I was raised or not, you know, what I've always been taught and those type of things, then, then we've got grounds that we can work on and everything and, and we can maintain that unity. Uh, because it, it's not me or it's not you that's making the call here. It's it's God's word that's making the call. So uh, that's that, important. That's how I always. That's something that I pick up, and I always, anytime I do a Bible study, um, I, I commit to if I say anything, I will use scripture to back me up. But I require you in this on the same. If you say anything, show me the scripture right. to back it up. And let the Bible kind of speak for itself, rather than us throwing out ideas and right. concepts. And that seems to work well. When you let God's word do all the talking for you, absolutely. Well, I, I do the same thing. It's one of the first things to do is to to establish what is authority <laughs> with that individual, and, and and both of us come to an understanding right from the get go where our authority is going to lie. Okay, and if we can't find it here, then then yeah, then I, I, yeah. you know I don't really care what your <laughs> preacher has to say, yeah. you know, or anything like that. Uh, so. Kind of along the same lines, what's the cure for legalism? <laughs> this is kind of a, a tricky, you know, it's a tricky concept because <clears throat> a lot of times the reaction to hear stuff like this is then, then we flip it to the other side where everything's okay, that we should just love. Um, and, you know, as humans, we can't just walk down the middle. We have to swing one way or the other. It's hard for us just to accept the fact that there's that middle ground there that we need to follow. Um, and so I, we talked about this, I don't remember last week or the week before, but it kind of ringed in my mind when I read this question, but that we have to have 100% love and 100% truth. Because without that full engagement of both, you're never going to be able to, to find the truth and to be able to share that truth with others and, and be able to work together 
to, to follow God's word. You know, one, if you have all that love and grace and, and mercy, that's awesome. But then if you don't have truth, it's, it's not in the, it's not pointed in the right direction. If you know you have all this truth, but you have no love and mercy and grace, you're not able to share it and, and bring people into it, then what good does that truth do you? So it has to be 100% of both, I think. Absolutely. And, and what we've already kind of talked about, the idea of the, that we have to seek unity mm -hmm. in this thing. It's, it, it's, we're trying to bring everything together and keep everything together. And I think also what helps is, is to gain and maintain a proper perspective of God. Mm -hmm. um, how would God handle this discussion or how would God handle this? You know, we don't see God just sitting around waiting for the moment to, to, to judge everybody. You know, point his finger at everybody and tell everybody you're doing this wrong or you're doing this or you can't do this or all that. We, we see a different God. And if we can take and manifest in our hearts the same attitude and perspective that God takes with us as we deal with each other, which we should be doing, I think scripture backs that up, uh, then that will help us in this battle sometimes legalistic mindset that sometimes perhaps we all have mm -hmm. if, we, if we do. Alrighty, well, hope that, uh, that you enjoyed that uh, section of scripture and we'll continue to look at it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Our Father in the heaven, Lord, we're so thankful for this day. All many blessings you bless our lives with. You're such an awesome, amazing God. We're, we're so thankful for the, the things that you do in our life, the, 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 the breath that you give us, the, the world that you create us for us to live in, God. We pray that in this world, we'd always be that light, that we would always be that example, that we could always stand out and be different so that others would recognize your love and your mercy and your grace and that peace that can only be found in you, God. We pray that you continue to be with our elders and continue to bless them with that knowledge and wisdom to, to lead this congregation, God. And we pray that we would always follow and, and, and be those, those people that you would have us to be, God. We pray that you be all the upcoming events, all the seminars and all the things we have going on, God, that all these things would bring glory and honor to you and we can grow closer to God, and we can grow closer to one another, God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.